my students tell me that they are afraid of conversating with people in English. They start looking for corners, they hide their face because they don't want to be a part of the discussion which is in English because then they will have to give inputs in English. Does it sound familiar? Are you also suffering from same inhibitions, from same phobia that you are unable to speak when you get a chance to speak in English? You avoid those kind of situations when you have to give inputs in English. Hi, I am Surabhi Jain, Language Acquisition Coach and in this video, I'm going to give you five mind-blowing hacks using which you can participate in English conversations confidently and smoothly. So probably you know that how important fluent English communication skills are for you not only to achieve your professional goals, but also to attain your personal goals. Understanding the natural flow of English conversation is going to give you the confidence, which is going to help you to speak naturally in almost every situation. So in this lesson today, I'm going to share five essential conversation skills which you must have as an English learner. Not only that, I'm going to tell you why you must learn those skills. And I'm also going to share with you certain vocabulary which you can use in almost all the situations. So if this sounds interesting, why not join our community by simply hitting that subscribe button and pressing that bell icon so that you never miss on any new lesson created by me. Before we even begin speaking, it is important to understand the situation or the topic. And this is where the 5W questions come to our rescue. The 5W questions help us to gather all the information which is required to give our inputs, which is required to generate ideas about what to speak. These 5W questions can be what, who, when, where, and why. Now, in a conversation, these 5W questions help us to understand and communicate about the world around us. Asking these 5W questions, what, where, when, who, why, help us to collect all the information which is required to understand and analyze and describe the situation. Let's consider a very common everyday example. Now, people generally ask me about my job. Now, if I answer this question using the five W's, I will be able to use a lot of information to answer the question. Let us take up the five W's one by one. What? Now, to answer this question, you need to ask yourself, what's happening? So, I am a language acquisition coach and I help English learners to learn English beyond classroom. I help them love their English, live their English so that they can speak English naturally and confidently. The next question can be when. Now this question could refer to a particular time in a day, morning, evening, afternoon, or it can be a particular day in a week or in a month. So to answer this question, I would say my content is published almost every week. I take workshops on weekends and on weekdays. The next question could be who? So to answer this question, you need to ask yourself, who are the people involved? Now, I could say that the people involved are obviously myself and the Fearless Communication Tribe team. The next question can be, where? So my content is published on YouTube. I create shorts and I also post reels on Instagram. And I also have my content on my online courses. The last question could be, why? Now, this question answers the motivation or the reason behind the action. So the motivation behind my being a trainer, being a trainer for the English learners is that I treat each and every English learner as my responsibility. I want to reach out to each and every English learner and help them shun off their inhibition and become a confident English speaker. Note that by doing this, you are analyzing the situation in English. You are training your brain to think in English. And it's such a good technique. It's such an easy technique that you can use it almost anywhere and in any situation. 
It may be problematic for you to speak fluently if you constantly keep on thinking about grammar and vocabulary. Your listener might face a difficulty in understanding you if you stop a lot in the conversation. He might even lose interest in the conversation. That is why using filler words and phrases is so important while conversating in English. Even the natural English speakers use them. In fact, they use them quite frequently. The filler words help you to speak English naturally, to sound as a natural English speaker. The first thing filler words help you is to, uh, they give you time to think. When you get stuck, maybe thinking about the right word, or you want to make sure how to answer the question, or you're taking time to get ideas into your mind, you can use filler words. The trick is to use the right filler word at the right place. Now let us identify what are the filler words used in this sentence. Um, uh, would you mind turning down the volume a bit? Actually, I'm trying to record a lesson. So the filler words I used in this sentence are um and actually. Some common examples of filler words and phrases are um, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, actually, right, basically. These filler words give you time to think. The other reason why we can use filler words is to make our statement sound less harsh. Now imagine you are on a lunch with a friend and she has something in her teeth. So straight away saying that you have something in your teeth might sound a bit harsh and might embarrass your friend. Instead of saying that directly, I can say um, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit something in your teeth. Now, that might sound polite and might save your friend from the embarrassment which she would have faced when you would have spoken this statement directly. Fillers also help to change the tone or attitude of a statement. They help us to make the statement weaker or stronger. For example, let us consider these three sentences. The first sentence I think hamsters are cute. It's a regular statement where you are just expressing your opinion. The second statement, actually, the hamsters are cute. When you use this kind of statement, it shows that you are presenting this statement as a part of the conversation where you are, uh, somebody else might have disagreed with you, but you think actually the hamsters are cute. The third sentence, at the end of the day, I think hamsters are cute, might be and end to a discussion where you might be discussing whether their hamsters are ugly or they are cute. So it shows the end of the conversation. Fillers also help to include the listeners in the conversation. Now, a conversation takes two people. Obviously, uh, when you are in a conversation, fillers help you kind of reach out to the listener and drag his attention. For example, you are giving a presentation and you are speaking on a topic and you just say, isn't it a good way to reach out to the customers, right? So right is a filler word. When you say right, you, the, your listener, your audience might nod in agreement. In this way, you are dragging their attention back to what you are speaking without actually ending your speech. Now, as a language learner, there are times we come across situations where either the speaker is speaking too fast or he uses a word or phrase which we completely don't comprehend, which is completely new to us. Or in general, the speaker is speaking unclearly. So in such a situation, instead of blaming yourself or feeling guilty and feeling embarrassed of your low language ability, try to clarify using certain questions. You can ask certain questions to the speaker and clarify what you have understood. So don't feel embarrassed, don't feel that because you have missed a keyword or phrase, you are not a part, you will not be able to keep the conversation going. Just ask one of these questions. I don't think I quite understand what you meant. Do you mind repeating it, please? Could you go over that one more time? I'm not sure I understood it completely. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it one more time? 
and after that the person will clarify what he said and you will be easily able to understand and carry on with the conversation another hack which you need to confirm your understanding is restating the person's idea when you do so you confirm that actually you were listening to the speaker you also give a chance to the speaker to clarify or simplify if you misheard or misunderstood any piece of the information restating an idea is a great way to avoid any kind of misunderstanding in fact it gives you an ample opportunity to clarify information without actually saying i did not understand anything so here are a few examples i'd just like to confirm if i understood that correctly if i understand you correctly you are saying that my impression of what you said is that what you meant now is that now you might want to change the topic of the conversation the reason may be because you are quite uncomfortable talking about that topic or you find that topic boring or you have very less information about that topic or maybe you have even something more interesting to talk about so the best way to do that is to ask questions ask a question which is slightly related to the current topic this gives an opportunity to the speaker to talk about the topic of their interest let me explain this with an example for example you are having a conversation about cricket but you are not in very much interested in cricket or maybe you don't have a lot of information about the cricket but uh how can you divert the conversation you can simply say talking about sports have you been following the fifa world cup recently now to do this the first thing you need to do is recognize and acknowledge what the person was speaking about and then find a question to slowly move from that part of the conversation to the other so here are a few expressions which you could use speaking about games have you heard about the fifa world cup Well that reminds me of the FIFA World Cup. Have you heard about the FIFA World Cup? So let us quickly recap the five hacks we learned today. Number 1 using the 5W questions. Number 2 using the filler words and phrases. Number 3 clarifying what you heard. Number 4 restating the idea and number 5 changing the topic of conversation. Now I hope these hacks are going to help you smoothen your conversation while you are conversating with an English speaker. But my dear friends, always remember one thing. Fluent English speaking is not about speaking accurate English. It's not about using nice to have vocabulary words. It's all about how well you are able to convey your message. The essence of communication is the listener should be able to decode your message the way you want him to do. I make lessons which help you to live your English and love your English and learn English beyond classrooms. So if you have any questions related to this video or any part of English learning, you can connect with me on Instagram on English underscore with Surabhi Jain. I will be more than happy to help you to answer all your queries. So keep on following me and do let me know in the comment box. on which topic do you want me to make videos on now if you like this video don't forget to share it with your friends and help them achieve better communication skills i will meet you in the next video till then this is surabhi jain saying goodbye